In this video, we will do a limit example with an absolute value. So the example says, find the limit as x approaches 4 of 2 over x minus a half all over the absolute value of x minus 4. So to get it started, let's plug in 4. And if we do that, we get 2 over 4 minus a half on the top. And then on the bottom, I'll get absolute value of 0. So the top is just a half minus a half, which is 0. And the bottom is also zero. So this is an indeterminate form, which means we need to simplify. We gotta simplify it, but how do we deal with, with that absolute value? So how do we simplify with that absolute value in there? So here, we have to recall something from algebra about how to write absolute value as a piecewise function. Okay, so specifically what I'm gonna to try to do is, I'm gonna think about how I get rid of that absolute value. All right, so I'm moving that down to give myself some more room. Okay, so there's two cases I'm gonna consider because the absolute value when you plug in some numbers, like seven, Nothing happens because this number is already positive. It just stays a 7. But if you an input a negative number into it, like negative 3, the sign changes and you get positive 3. So I want to think about, well, what type of number would I have to plug in so that the sign doesn't change? What type of number would I have to plug in so that the sign does change? And if x is greater than or equal to 4, then the inside of this absolute value is going to be non-negative. And in that case, I don't need to change the sign. I just write what is inside, which is x minus 4. It would already be non-negative. If, on the other hand, x was less than 4, then x minus 4 would be negative. So I can't just write x minus 4, because the absolute value is supposed to output a, neg a positive number, sorry, a non-negative number. And this is negative right now. So to fix it, I would put a negative in front of it, and now that makes it non-negative. All right, and that is how we can rewrite the absolute value as a piecewise function. So I want to find the limit as x approaches 4. But depending on what side of 4 we're on, if we're on the right-hand side of 4, we're bigger than 4, that would correspond to this top piece of this function. And if we're on the left-hand side of 4, then we're less than 4, and that would correspond to the bottom piece. So I need to now take the one-sided limits so that I can handle that absolute value. Because I know how to get rid of the absolute value if I know if x is greater than or equal to 4 or if I know x is less than 4. So depending on which side of 4 I'm on. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this from the right and then we'll do it from the left-hand side. So from the right, we get the limit as x approaches 4 of 2 over x minus a half over that denominator over absolute value of x minus 4. And on the numerator, I have fraction minus a fraction. Let's get a common denominator. So I'll multiply the first one by 2 over 2, the second fraction by x over x. And when I do that, I will end up with 4 minus x over 2x. Okay, so because x is approaching 4 from the right, that means x is greater than 4. And if x is greater than 4, that means I am working with the top piece. So the absolute value of x minus 4 that I have on the denominator just becomes x minus 4. It becomes the top piece. All right, so let's simplify further. We get the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. And I have 4 minus x over 2x. Now what I'm going to do is this x minus 4 that's on the denominator, I'm going to write that as a fraction. I'm going to write that whole thing over 1. And when I divide that fraction, when I divide by this fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. 1 over x minus 4. And now 4 minus x and x minus 4 are almost the same. I can make them exactly the same if I factor out a negative from one of them. So maybe I'll factor a negative out of this numerator term. 
So negative factored out, and I'll be left with x minus 4. And now this is nice, the x minus 4s cancel, and let's plug in. So we are left with negative 1 on the top, and then we get 2 times plug in 4, we'll get 2 times 4, which is negative 1 over 8. That's our limit from the right. Now let's do the limit from the left. So the limit from the left, we'll get the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of same thing, 2 over x minus a half over that absolute value. On the top, I'll get a common denominator, which we've already seen how to do, which will give me 4 minus x over 2x. So now let's think about the denominator, that absolute value. Because x is approaching 4 from the left, that means x is less than 4. And if x is less than 4, then we're going to be talking about this bottom piece of the absolute value function. So on this denominator, the absolute value becomes negative now, x minus 4. All right, so let's simplify. This equals the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of 4 minus x over 2x. Let's write this expression uh, that I have on the denominator over 1. So now I can multiply by the reciprocal by 1 over, and let, let me distribute that negative in. That'll give me 4 minus x, which gives me this nice cancellation on the top. And now I can plug in. If I plug in 4, I get 1 over 2 times 4, which is 1 eighth. Alrighty, so we know the limit from the right, we know the limit from the left, and they're different. So since the one-sided limits, I'm going to abbreviate limbs, are different. That means our limit that we cared about here, the limit as x approaches, what was it, 4, 4 of 2 over x minus a half over it that absolute value of x minus 4, that limit does not exist, D-N-E, and that's our answer.